Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am delighted to be here to host this first International Disaster Risk Reduction Documentary Awards Ceremony. I want to honor the 12 wonderful documentaries that have been selected for these inaugural awards. The competition has been established by the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction, the Asia Broadcasting Union, and the European Broadcasting Union with one major objective in mind. These organizations want to encourage and inspire even more filmmakers, producers, and broadcasters to make the sort of powerful and insightful documentaries that can help to protect vulnerable communities from the risks posed by future disasters. This year's awards reveal a truly global picture of disaster risk reduction efforts from flooding in Pakistan and Great Britain to the devastating earthquake and tsunami that struck the communities here in Japan. The only criteria for these awards were that the films had to be focused on one aspect of disaster risk reduction and that they also had to be broadcast on television between the years of 2005 and 2015. Now, the judging panel may have lived to regret this decision after they were faced with the unenviable task of picking just 12 final nominees from almost 100 entries. The nominees have been selected in the following four categories. Category one, best human story. Two, best investigative story. Three, most innovative documentary. And finally, the best disaster risk reduction story. Now this evening, just like the Academy Awards, We'll screen trailers of all the nominated films before revealing the winner. So, let's begin this evening's ceremony with a brief look at the three wonderful films that have been nominated for our first category, Best Human Story. On March 11, 2011, a massive earthquake struck the Tohoku region in northeastern Japan, triggering a destructive tsunami that swallowed up a number of coastal towns. One such town was Kamaishi in Iwate Prefecture. But amidst all the destruction, something extraordinary happened in what has been called the Kamaishi Miracle. All 184 students of Kamaishi Elementary School had survived. Everybody run! A tsunami is coming! This animated reenactment of that unforgettable day is based on the first-hand accounts of the very children who created the Kamaishi miracle. How could children have possessed such resolve in the face of disaster? Where did this strength come from? The answers lie ahead in the Kamaishi Miracle. March 11th, 2011. With Sanriku as the hypercenter, a massive magnitude 9 earthquake struck eastern Japan. Shortly after the earthquake, a devastating tsunami engulfed the Pacific coast. One cameraman living in Kesanuma captured striking footage of the disaster as the town was swallowed by the tsunami and came face to face with one of the biggest struggles of his life. I could hear shouts and cries for help all around. At this point, I was telling myself, what am I doing? I shouldn't be filming right now. But then... Usually I can see my house from here, but it's been completely washed away. There's nothing left. As one of this town's newly homeless, and as a news cameraman, he began bearing witness to the struggles of life and death through the viewfinder of his camera.
てのものを飲み込みながら津波が押し寄せています On March 11th, the tsunami rushed into both schools and they were submerged up to the third floor. The middle school students have the younger students' hands firmly in their own. Adults and children alike ran up the steep incline desperate to escape the clutches of the tsunami. The 600 students and faculty who evacuated from the two schools together that day survived the deadly tsunami. Three fantastic nominees that really bear testimony to the power of film. I'd like to invite jury member Mr. Giacomo Mazzone from the European Broadcasting Union to announce the winner of Best Human Story. Thank you. Thank you very much. I know already what there is written here, but uh, you don't know yet. And the winner is the Kameishi Miracle of the NHK. Wow. To accept the award, director Kazuyo Fukuda. As Fukuda has made many programs about the people and conditions in parts of Japan hit by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. Thank you, thank you very much for choosing our program as the best human story. Uh, it's a great honor to, to be here, and uh, uh, we'd like to share this um, great award with the teachers and uh, children of my elementary school. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll agree that was a very well deserved win. Thank you very much indeed for that, for giving us that film, Ms. Kukuda. Now, I'd like to introduce our next category. Best Investigative Story. We were sleeping at night. It rained and rained. Water gushed into our mud huts. We ran for our lives. We made temporary houses on higher ground nearby, but the water kept rising. We had to escape again. We've never seen rain like that. It was frightening. I have no words to describe it. It is very difficult for us to reach to all the most vulnerable communities. The relief efforts uh, have left a lot to be desired. The military was not called in for over seven days. That, to me, is a real crime. What time are you for you? Oras magpalaot. Oras para magsaka. Oras para pumasok sa trabaho. Oras para bumiyahe.
iba-iba ang kahulugan ng oras para sa iba't ibang tao. Pero lahat tayo, mula pagkabata hanggang sa pagtanda, naghahabol ng deadline. Posible kayang pati ang ating mundo ay nauubusan na rin ng oras? Pati nga ba ang kalikasan may mga deadline din? Kung susuriin ang bawat minuto, bawat oras ng ating pamumuhay, paggamit at pagkuha sa kapaligiran, ano kaya ang ating matutuklasan? Oras na para sa anim na pong minutong babago sa pagtingin mo sa panahon. sa oras natin sa mundo. For weeks, Panorama has been filming with the people living with the floods. Families driven out by the water. This is what flooding is really like. It's really just horrible and filthy and dirty. With so much of the country in the threat, how do we decide what we protect? You experts, you flooding experts, get down here, get your waders on, get your dry suits on, and get the data you need to help prevent this happen again. Who chooses who gets saved and who gets sacrificed? We've been abandoned. Everything that's been done, we've had to fight to do ourselves. We're fighting to raise money. And is the government being straight about the choices we face? It's stupid politics. It's stupid politics not to tell people the truth. To present the award and announce the winner, Brigitte Leone from UNISDR will announce the best investigative story. Good evening. As it has been so difficult to choose among the 40 best investigative stories that we have received, exceptionally tonight we're going to have two winners. The winners are It's Time from GMA Philippines. <laughs> and the second winner in this category is Britain Underwater from BBC. Producers of Britain's Underwater couldn't be with us this evening to accept the joint award, but we'll take care of it for them. Accepting in person by representatives from GMA is executive producer Rochelle Figueroa. On behalf of the men and women of GMA Network Incorporated, the people who work behind the um, documentary It's Time, I would like to thank the United Nations uh, Office for Risk Reduction the Asia Broadcasting Union and the European Broadcasting Union for this recognition. Awards such as this inspire broadcasters to produce more documentaries that will help set the agenda on the salience and importance of risk reduction and preparedness for vulnerable countries like the Philippines. Once again, thank you. Mabuhay ang Pilipinas. Now, let's move on to the next category. You'll remember its most innovative story. Some call it the lost Shangri-La. 
But high up in the mountains lurks a danger that could destroy this harmonious people and the lifestyles they have always enjoyed. High up in the Himalayas, the glaciers are melting and Bhutan is facing a potential calamity. I think uh, people will term it as the tsunami from the sky. We have appointed focal persons in every villages, every settlements, beginning from the source till down the line. We hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Bhutan's fight for survival. I need you to be even more quiet than with cattle. Okay. I've come to a final training session with the new team of emergency vets. Juan Carlos has one more thing to teach them. How to move nervous pigs in a storm. A skill they can then pass on to Filipino farmers. Don't kick. Touch. Touch with the knee. Touch with the knee. This corralling method is based on an approach developed by the Canadian rancher Bud Williams in the 1960s. They don't care what, what is happening because what they just feel is like a wall approaching from yeah. the back. So they move where they find space. This is surprisingly effective. Squeeze and touch, squeeze and touch. <laughs> Moving animals quickly and calmly in a disaster is vital if you want them to survive. Mongolia is landlocked, with a continental climate producing very hot summers and bitterly cold winters. Weather conditions were especially severe in the years between 1999 and 2002 when there was a series of summer droughts followed by heavy winter snows, a condition called zud. These zuds significantly damaged the livelihoods of up to 80% of the nation's herder households, and at least 14,000 herder families lost all their livestock. <laughs> And to announce the winner, I'll invite Natalia Ilieva from the Asia Broadcasting Union to announce the winner of the most innovative story category. Good afternoon, everyone. I will join my colleagues to say how difficult it was to pick up the winners because we were presented in, with truly inspirational stories. And this category, most innovative story, was, wasn't unique in this, but it was really difficult to pick up one winning um, documentary because you saw from the small extract from helping herders to herding pigs, <laughs> we had 20 more like this, very different angles and approaches to um, how to cope with disaster. But at the end, only one documentary can win. And it is Vets in Disaster Zone, Dragonfly Productions. Accepting the award on behalf of the producers is James Sawyer, who you saw in that movie. He's the Global Director of Disaster Management for World Animal Protection, who features there. Very nice, thank you very much. Um, 
I'd just like to say thank you very much on behalf of Dragonfire Productions and Wild Animal Protection for this award. Um, it gave us a great opportunity to demonstrate the importance of animals um, in both uh, disaster response and also disaster risk reduction. But I'd also like to dedicate this award to the people and animals of the Philippines who showed great uh, resilience in the aftermath of the disaster to, to come back and show that resilience really is as much about state of mind as anything else. Thank you. My apologies that I can't be with you today to collect the award for most innovative story. It was a pleasure to highlight the work that World Animal Protection do, helping disaster hit communities by supporting their animal populations, both in the aftermath of a disaster and by bringing innovative technology from all over the world to help prepare them for the next disaster. I'm delighted that this film and the work that World Animal Protection do has been recognised by this competition. Thank you. In the wake of Typhoon Haiyan, Dragonfly Production Company flew out to the Philippines alongside World Animal Protection to document the mission of their veterinary and disaster management specialists and save the lives of animals caught up in Haiyan. James Sawyer was deployed to the Philippines to oversee the teams and the operation, and hence the frighteningly effective movie. Now, finally, ladies and gentlemen, it's my very great honor to introduce the final category, which really combines the key elements of all the other categories into one film. Are you with us for this last category? Everybody still awake? <laughs> Good to see you there. The best disaster risk reduction story. Nous avons décidé de mesurer la radioactivité de l'environnement quotidien de nos enfants. Avec le détecteur de points chauds, le Hotspot Finder, nous parcourons toute la superficie du parc. On insiste sur les endroits où les enfants aiment bien jouer. Comme il s'agit d'un animal sauvage qui évoluait dans la préfecture de Fukushima, en se nourrissant de végétaux contaminés, le taux de césium est sûrement très élevé. C'est ce qu'on cherche à vérifier maintenant. Comme vous le voyez, il n'y a aucun dégât matériel visible. Et comme il y avait beaucoup de radioactivité, on nous a dit qu'il fallait partir. La priorité, c'est de trouver sur quel organe le césium vient se fixer. C'est la première fois au monde qu'on fait une étude d'une telle ampleur. after tsunami, Iwate Prefecture had come to a conclusion that in restoring the city, 
they had relied too heavily on the tsunami seawall. This had led to massive lives lost and assets destroyed. The government has decided to expropriate the land and move the communities by the beach to a nearby mountain. Um, I get to open the envelope in this case, and it's a great honor to do so. I've always wanted to say this. And the winner is Rebuilding Sichuan by the Discovery Channel. The award is to be accepted by Mr. Sen Zhang. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. え、この作品に関わったたくさんの協力の方に感謝の気持ちを申し上げます。本当にありがとうございました。これからも素晴らしい作品を作っていきたいと思います。よろしくお願いします。ありがとうございました。With the announcement of our final winner, we can draw a close to this, the first, the inaugural International Disaster Risk Reduction Documentary Awards. We thank you very much for participating and for um, joining us in a very busy, packed schedule during this, uh, this uh, uh, third World Conference on Disaster Risk Reduction. I hope that this continues, because as uh, Ms. Figueroa said from the Philippines, um, it's an inspiring thing that the work that we do as filmmakers is recognized, uh, the human stories are recognized, and they inspire others to make it through disasters. I'm Veronica Pedroza. On behalf of the UNISDR, the European Broadcasting Union, and the Asia Broadcasting Union, have a good evening. Well done. Bravo. 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 Well done. Arigato gozaimashita. Well done. But amidst all the destruction, something extraordinary happened in what has been called the Kamaishi Miracle. All 184 students of Kamaishi Elementary School had survived. Oras magpalaot. Oras para magsaka. Oras para pumasok sa trabaho. Oras para bumiyahe. Iba-iba ang kahulugan ng oras para sa iba't ibang tao. Pero lahat tayo, mula pagkabata hanggang sa pagtanda, naghahabol ng deadline. For weeks, Panorama has been filming with the people living with the floods. Families driven out by the water. This is what flooding is really like. It's really just horrible and filthy and dirty. With so much of the country in the threat, how do we decide what we protect? Juan Carlos has one more thing to teach them. How to move nervous pigs in a storm. A skill they can then pass on to Filipino farmers. Don't kick, touch. Touch with the knee, touch with the knee. This corralling method is based on an approach developed by the Canadian rancher Bud Williams in the 1960s.